I had an opportunity to go to Puerto Viejo yesterday and meet with a friend of mine, Gio Mace. Super kid, superstar. He's a YouTube creator. He has his own YouTube channel. And I'm going to put a, a link to his channel in the description. I've talked about him before. And I want to encourage everybody to go and subscribe to his channel and, and watch his content because he's very good at what he does. We talked about sex, drugs, crime, and politics in Ecuador in our little chat yesterday, and I wanted to share it with you, and I'll start on it right after this. Hey. Oh, rock and cheek. Hello there. So as I was talking about on the way up here to Puerto Viejo, I was going to meet my buddy GM Ace. This is him right here. I'm going to put a link in the description to his channel. I encourage you to go and watch his stuff. Please subscribe, okay? And give him the thumbs up on all of his videos. And if you don't like his videos, bite me, okay? And that's all. <laughs> but you can't forget the biting. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to sit with you and talk to you about all this stuff because I, I got a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of stuff going on in Ecuador right now. And of course, everybody's writing to me, Don, what about this? What about this political instability, drug-related murders, you know, rampant drug-related murders, he says, okay? You know, and, and do expats really have to worry about being safe? In general, do you feel safe? They're asking me, do I feel safe, you know? And of course, you know, I answered the guy. I, I wrote to him, and I was blunt with him. I just flat out told him, no, 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 no. You know, you think it's bad here. Go to the U.S. where they have mass shootings every single day, you know? But stuff is, is happening around here, you know? There's been some shootings. There's been some drug-related shootings, cartel shootings, up in Esmeraldas, Monte Cristo, uh, what was the coastal town? In uh, Montanita. Yeah, Montanita. We had a shooting just a block behind where I live. So we're here we are. This video is about sex, drugs, crime, and politics, and now we're talking about this crime part of it. And I want to know what you think, okay? So I mean, I, I know you've been around a long time. You or live here in Puerto Viejo. You were here during the earthquake. You, you're an educated guy. You have lots of experience with life here in Ecuador. Do, do, we, do we have anything to worry about? If you want the shortened answer to that question, I don't think any expat coming from the States uh, or from anywhere around the world really has any immediate concern in, re in regards to all the things that they're, that they're hearing right now. But there are ifs and buts to each situation. Like, for example, when we talk about this whole crime, the gr drug-related cartels and everything, I ha I'd have to ask the person who, who's asking this question, are you into drugs? Are you going to deal with these drug dealers? Are you going out and actively buying and consuming drugs and putting yourself in that kind of danger? The danger with drugs is, like the crime related to the drugs is very real. There's the shootings and everything, but do you know who are, who are the people who are targeted for those things? It's the people who got into deals with these cartels, with these drug leaders. They have something related to that situation which makes them be in that kind of danger. So just to give an example, not real example, just to give an example. If X person, let's call him Bob, decides I wanna buy some drugs, he buys some drugs, he starts consuming the drugs and he's like, okay, I like the drugs. Constantly buying, 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 buying. One day he doesn't have money to buy drugs. He wants drugs. He asks for drugs. He can't pay for them. I'll pay you back later. That's where your problem begins. When you start getting into debt with these collectors, these loan sharks, with these uh, drug cartels, and when you can't pay them back, that's when they hunt you down to do the, what they call here the sicariatos, which are just assassination attempts. Yeah. It's never your position. You're not the person. If you're not involved in it, you run less risk of it happening. And like you said, you go to the States, and of course, there's the mass shootings and everything. But this is very similar to a comment that I replied to. I think it was a comment that I replied to the other day. If not, it was part of my conversation. But. Your chance of, of a mass shooting, of course, now in the States, it's like a monthly, weekly thing. Daily. As, 
maybe even daily. Over here, there is, of course, the risk of you being at a restaurant. Like, we could be hanging out at Dulce Cremoso, and the guy next to us owes drug money. Mm -hmm. And then we're in danger. But the chances of that, as you can see, it's one person, it's very slim. And so that makes me think about something else. I mean, there are expats that come here with the expectation of being able to buy drugs. You know, I know some. I have some good friends, you know, that mess around with. I never would ever rat them out. But would you say it's not a good idea to hang out with these people? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I mean, because in the States, Everybody you know practically has some relationship with some drug problem, whether it's personal or in the family or whatever. But here, hanging out with somebody that does drugs and buys drugs from people locally, you don't know what kind of relationship they have going on with that drug dealer. So I would, would you say it's probably not a good idea? Well, in, in general, just to, to go into in debt with this answer, like, in, in general, like with people who, who buy drugs, well first I should say that I have no problem with anyone who does drugs or who, who buys them, consumes them, it's fine. I mean, everything is okay if, as long as it's not in excess and as long as it's not the bad stuff like the ones that like put you in critical conditions. I understand that in the States it's very common right now to, to do marijuana, I think it is, and not a big deal. I'm okay with it as long as no one tried to force me to do it. It's the same perspective I have with drinking uh, and with other things. It's okay if you do it, I respect it, just don't try to get me into it. Um, but going into the, the thought process of like, of someone like being friends or hanging out with that person, you can hang out with them, you can be friends with them if you know who they are. And if you know that they're not someone who's gonna get into debt with these kind of situations because you, you put yourself at risk in that kind of situation, like the example I used before. If the person is, is addicted, because there, there's a difference between being an enthusiast, like wanting to do it, and being addicted or to it, casual. like needing it, like or just a casual uh, smoker, drinker, uh, someone who does drugs. Not sure what you would call that, but um, there's a big difference between that kind of person and the kind of person who needs it. If they don't have it, they're gonna have a problem. There's a problem. For, yeah. for that person, you might want to try to avoid casually hanging out in public with them because like I said, these assassination attempts are mainly to those kinds of people. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of people who already have the kind of you know, mentality tolerance from the states or who know that they can't get into addiction, they just use it as a recreational use. Like I don't think you have a problem with those kinds of people. Over here, but like you said, and that's a very important comment too, you don't know the life behind each person. In, in person, like someone can seem really, really cool but behind closed doors, they can be an addict. Yeah. Uh, if they're married, they can treat their family poorly. We really don't know. They would never show us that. Yeah, this person here says, has tourism and real estate slowed down? And the reason why he's asking, you know, because he thinks that there's such a problem with murder and crime and drugs and all that stuff going on here. I like that expression that I heard once that I can trust you, but I don't know your friends, you know? Or I can trust you, but I can't trust your friends. Yes. You know, and that's what people have to be concerned about, you know? So I, the, just for the sake of discussion, the, the murders that took place in Monta was a targeted hit. There were some innocent people killed in that, and that's the most unfortunate, you know? But people say, they, people, hear that, North Americans hear that news that, well, two kids and a woman got killed. Well, actually, the woman was part of the target, was the target, <laughs> you know. Pretty much. She was the wife of the guy, and, and but two innocent children got killed at the same time. And so people in North America are freaking out over that, as they should, you know, to some degree, but they have to understand that this is not North America where it's happening every day. No. It's not happening every day here. I tell people, well, wrap this up on crime. I tell people, stop freak, freaking out over crime. Crime in Ecuador is still petty crime, in my opinion. All this other stuff, unfortunate situation, you know. I think to make it to make the comparison a little bit easier, like the person who asked that question, do you go through a crime-related situation in your immediate area right now? Mm -hmm. Like for that person. 
if you don't, then the chances of it happening over here are much less. Over there, where everyone is allowed to carry guns, you're much more likely to run into a crime, a gun-related situation, than you are over here, where only really, really bad criminals have guns, yes. and they're not out on the streets every moment of the day. Right, right. So it's like... So know. has the government stepped up, I said we're going to end there, but I do have one question. Has the government actually stepped up law enforcement recently? <laughs> There's this expression in Spanish, pura boca, which is like all mouth. Like, so the government say, says they did this, but from what I could see as a person living here in Ecuador, and I don't know if you've noticed as well, I don't really see more police out on the street. I don't see this supposed military that's supposed to be out patrolling the streets. Last night, my dad, told, like I got home from work, and my dad was talking, he had talked to some policemen, and my friend had called me, he said, hey, yo, your dad was talking to police. And I was like, okay, so I asked my dad, so what happened with the police? Oh, no, I was just asking them how late they were gonna stay out in the night because they go back home at eight. Mm -hmm. And for businesses that stay open until later, they don't wanna stay open until later because if they're going home at eight, that means we can't keep our business open if you know there's still danger out on the street. So I was asking them to see if they were gonna stay out later, how late they were gonna stay out for, and if it was possible for them to stay, you know, till nine or 10 so that everyone could feel safe. Yeah. So really, it's not a very noticeable difference, at least not in the city of Puerto Viejo. Not sure about Manta. Maybe you'll notice it more in cities where crime is a little bit more rampant. Maybe uh, you'll think about it like Guayaquil or nowadays even Quito bigger cities, you might actually see more police. Right. Even when I was in Quito, I saw a decent amount of policemen around there. But um, for me to say the situation has changed, it looks safer because the government promised that, no, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah. On the topic of sex, I, there, I, one of the things that I wanted to touch on, I know, personally, I know of three male expats that came to Ecuador for sex tourism. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not real sure where to go with this topic. A lot of people say, you know, they, the prostitution apparently is legal here. Uh, prostitution is not really a problem here, is it? From what I've been able to gather, or from, what I've, from the time that I've lived here, from what my friends always tell me, because uh, they're the ones who are more into this, like, you know the specific places in each city where there's uh, there is prostitution. Mm -hmm. Like it's actually um, let's just, let's see how you would call this a friendly outing with with your your homeboys. Like to say, oh, let's go to to what you would call, I guess, the yeah. the club, the yeah. nightclub, though. Yeah. Um, and even there are certain parts of the city where you're like this in this part in this corner, you can find someone for you know for prostitution. Mm -hmm. So like specifically in Puerto Viejo, like because you hear it all the time, there's this place called Topless. Like literally it's called Topless. And that's the place where you can go for, you know, if you just want to drink and watch or if you want to partake. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not something that's, that's frowned upon unless of course you're, 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 you're with someone and they find out and then that would be horrible obviously, but you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and the guys that I'm talking about, I mean, I don't hold anything against them for, for that, I always say to each their own, you know. But, you know, I, I, I just don't want people in North America to think that, hey, you know, come to Ecuador, you're gonna have, <laughs> you know, all the sex you want. Well, maybe if you meet the right person, you can, but yeah. as far as prostitution and sex on the streets, and, you know, I, I, I've not seen this, I, but I don't go to those places. You know, of course. So, but same thing. Like, I don't go, but obviously, like I said, the conversation with friends is like, let's just suppose uh, we're planning to do something on the weekend, and, like celebrate. It's like, oh, let's go to topless. Let's go to las cariñosas, like they say here, which is now an expression that they use here. They even say Alaska because it's a las cariñosas, and las cariñosas <laughs> is referring to, you know, oh, they say Alaska. Yeah, so they say Alaska. So like if you hear Alaska out of context and you're not sure what it means, it might be that. Like if it's not talking about the country, it's probably about that. So is, if, if a guy in Monta wants a quick date, probably just about any taxi driver would know where to take him? Yeah, I think in Manta there's actually a, a bigger place, because I remember my friends used to talk about it, like they said, oh, the popular one here is the one that I mentioned, yeah. but in Manta there's this bigger one, it has a bouncer outside and everything, like oh, it's wow. a... So how much does it cost? 
if I remember correctly, somewhere like just hitting an approximate, it's at around like five to 20. Wow, how would you know that? <laughs> My friends talk about it all the time. You're supposed to say, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I listen to the conversations. I I've heard the same thing. I take yeah. part in them, like the conversations, but <laughs> I don't partake in the actual going out to do I barely leave the house. Yeah, it's a very expensive proposition in the states. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Okay, so we talked a little bit about politics, or, or we talked a little bit about crime. We talked a little bit about drugs. We talked a little bit about sex. Now, politics. This is a biggie. Oh. I got. All this stuff here, most of this is about politics. We're obviously I'm not going to go through all this, but politics is a big, big topic right now. Would you not agree? Oh, considering we're having this, this Muerte Cruzada period that's not been seen in Ecuador, it's, it's actually new to everyone. That's why part of the conversation is the fact that since it's so new, that's why it actually, one, got approved, and two, that's why there's so much uncertainty around it. But even... Even with that uncertainty, what, I found, what I've found very strange about this whole transition period is that the backlash hasn't been bigger than it, what you would expect it to be with something like this. Mm -hmm. so. Now, is it safe to talk about Korea? As, as an expat, as an expat, let me, let me rephrase that question. Uh, is it even okay for an expat to talk about Korea? I don't see why not. Honestly, taking an interest in the country's like situations, political or otherwise, I mean, if people want, if people want expats to take interest in the positive parts, tourism and such, why wouldn't we be able to take part in, in the negative parts and the things that maybe not everyone would want to talk about? It should be fine because everyone has an opinion. Now, having an opinion versus trying to impose your ideals on something are two very different things. Yeah. So as long as no one's trying to impose something, like I think no one's gonna have a problem with it. And talking about Korea, the, the only problem you would have about talking about Korea is if for some reason Korea himself hears it because then he's gonna come out and defend himself because he was known to go on social media and, and, and talk. Yeah, and, and give his opinion. Yeah. But, um, Aside from that, the only other backlash you would have is from someone who really supports Korea. Yeah, so I ask around town in Monta, Ecuadorian friends, you know, who they would like to see as president, and I was really surprised. A lot of people say Korea. What would you say? What's the word on the street here in Puerto Viejo? Well, it depends on who you ask, because the, the proposition for Korea to be president, like right now I know it's not a thing, but mm -hmm. supposing like someone wanted Korea to be president, I understand their perspective because I, I, I was in that, that mindset as well, but you get enlightened when you talk to people who analyze a little bit more into the situation. The outside perspective of Korea being president is having the reality that we had about, let's just say five to six years ago. Things were better. We were actually seeing progress. The highways, the mm -hmm. schools, the hospitals, the bridges, the bridges everything. Yeah. It was just, it was like the whole infrastructure. It, it's just that you have to think about it like this. When, like, just put a time span of 10 years. If the first three years that you see Ecuador, everything is bad, you're like, oh, like you don't see any change. You're like, oh, this time period is bad. Then you go five years where you see things change, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is really cool. And then you go another three or whatever time is left, I think is uh, yeah, another like three or four years without seeing anything change. What do you think about the whole process? Were the third, first three years, the last four or the middle five, which one were the best? The middle five. So you want what was in that process to be there again. And that was Korea. Korea was the change that no one saw for a very long time. 10 years, suppose, like just imagine, just putting out a number out there, 10 years where everything was bad, five years where things looked really great, and then again, another three years where things are just back to being bad. Mm -hmm. So the, there's gonna be an election in August, right? That's gonna be, and Lasso's not gonna run. No, supposedly not. The assembly, I, I read the other day that half of the assembly's not gonna run. They shouldn't. Yeah. 
Uh, but what's going to happen is that there will be an election and there will be a new president, but he'll be a temporary president for, what, a year and a half or something like that? Approximately. That the rest of Lasso's term? Yes. Okay, so, so the story that I've been hearing that Korea is in Europe, Belgium, and he, he is really pushing for influence here. He's hoping, now th again, this is just what I've heard, he's hoping that a, one of his people will get elected for this temporary president and make some changes to the laws uh, that would really benefit him. Because I've heard that, that he's, he's got a prison sentence hanging over his head and that if he came back here, he'd have to go to prison. It all makes perfect sense to me if he, if he can get somebody under his influence elected, they can change the laws, he can come back and run for the next term president and become the president of Ecuador. Does that sound pretty accurate to you? Well, it sounds like uh, really good logic, but it also sounds messed up on his part to not first not take accountability for the crimes that he committed because obviously if he has jail sentence, it's because he's done something wrong. And I say it's ironic, not just because it's bad that he hasn't done that, but the fact that when he was in power, he would send people to jail, uh, reporters and such, who did not agree with the things that he said. Like, he would silence them, send them to jail. He would do that. And now he wants to avoid going to jail for things that he's done. Mm -hmm. So it makes no sense. Um, but going into the, the talk about it, I really haven't heard that, argue, that conversation yet which is surprising because it's a really sound and logic argument uh, to make. What I have heard as, is mainly about the transition period itself, which is basically, since it's a transition period, some people don't want to run because they feel it's a waste of resources. Yeah. And at the same time, the people who are running are running with the hopes that if they gain political presence now, like you become the president for this year and a half, so people see you, they know who you are, so they know who they should vote for later on because you made an effort to try to get in there. But that has its pros and cons as well because if you get into office right now and do nothing, people aren't gonna vote for you. Yeah. If you get into office and do something terribly, once again, they're not gonna wanna vote for you. But if you do something good, something noticeably good, which makes me feel like, and my, just my thought process thinking about the situation, if you do something noticeably good just to kind of appease the masses, then yes, people are gonna wanna vote for you, but you're just kind of like deceiving them. Like it could be a situation. I'm not saying it's the, gonna be the reality, but it's like, it's pretty much like giving someone, uh, like what they say here, they give you an apple while they eat the whole pie. Yeah, yeah. So, last question on that. Do expats have anything to worry about no. in regards to the upcoming elections? No. Just think about how, uh, the, how life has been in general up until this point. Have expats ever had anything to worry about? Have you had anything to worry about these past few years? No. No. Honestly. Other, other than noise? Yeah. Other than, other than the typical Ecuadorian lifestyle. Right. right. Politics are something that I feel it's good to know about because you want to know what the situation is in the country so that way you know what to prepare for. Like I keep saying in my, in my live streams, what I keep saying in my channel is the, thing, the price of things have been going up little by little, gradually. It's something that I even like saw in a comment that someone did notice, that they've noticed big price hikes since they've been here because they're actually in Ecuador now and they've noticed that, that change. But as someone who's been living here for a long time, you've noticed, you, I noticed it even more because things were a lot cheaper before. Even my favorite dish, it, it wasn't like substantially cheaper before, but before you could find it for a dollar, now you find it for two. You can find it in some places for $1.50, but they're not as good quality as the ones that are a little bit more expensive. So it's like, you do see the price changes, you do see the, the way that the effects have, like the, the things that are happening, and for someone who doesn't know why they're happening, they might just think nothing's happening. Like maybe someone doesn't keep track of their finances, so they're like, no, you know, Ecuador is still cheap. But for someone who's living here, and who's been keeping track of the finances and keeping track of the political situation, you notice why these things are happening. It's because of the way politics are going on. And I guess you can also relate it to the influence that the war in Ukraine is having. Just a little bit of a side note. Uh, I remember talking to my dad about that, and he said apparently Ukraine or Russia were one of the big uh, 
importers of grains of you know stuff like like rice and stuff like that so that's why if you've seen a price hike in that it's because of that situation okay true false okay i'm gonna ask you some true false questions okay and of course i'm not gonna hold you nobody's gonna hold you responsible for any of these okay this is only your opinion okay okay if korea gets voted into office do expats need to worry about their money yes or no true or false I'd say no, false, yeah. uh, mainly because if anything, Korea will try to make things, uh, if, I, if, if I had to imagine the position of any president coming into office, they would probably want to make things better for, for expats. I know there's this whole problem because Korea did fight with the United States, and that's why maybe some people might have concerns about that. But it wouldn't be convenient for him to come into the country and, and cause economic in, instability because it would just prove what, what everyone like, tried to say when, when they took him out. Like he's just here not to do things right. He's uh, doing some corrupt things to the side, which are unforgivable in any context. But it would be even worse if he came here and directly went to do that, something like that. Mm -hmm. True or false, if Correa gets elected as president, he's going to get rid of the American dollar. That's an interesting question because that was actually the, the thought process of this other guy who had come into power, who would not come into power, who was fighting with, with, with Guillermo Lasso. Mm -hmm. That's why no one voted for him. That's one of the reasons why no one voted for him. Well, not no one, but that's why he didn't win. Mm -hmm. It's because he wanted to change the dollar, so I don't think he would do that. If he does that, oh my God, that's, that would change my answer to the first question. It would completely make well, everything very complicated. Was it Korea that actually brought the American dollar in? Decker? No, no, not who, at all. Who was the it? American dollar came in a long time ago. Oh. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was either in the 1900s or the 1990s, <laughs> or it was around the 2000s. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here's a good question for you. This is from one of my viewers. What are the hot button political issues in Ecuador today? Hot button political issues such as? Infrastructure, military, drug control. If anything, crime. Crime. I mean, for the average Ecuadorian citizen, their main concern right now is crime because crime is at least for, for Ecuadorians who are getting themselves into this kind of mess, it's so bad that people don't want to go out until late. Like it's, it, that's why I don't know if, if it's happened in Manta yet, but in Puerto Viejo, a lot of businesses that used to close down at around 10, 11, 12 or later, now they're closing down at eight, nine, maximum 10 because they can't stay out later than that. Does it feel to you like Ecuador is just not doing enough about this? <laughs> Drug, crime, problem, cartel. Can anything be done? I mean, really, I mean, has, has it just taken over the world? <laughs> Oh, it's just, that's, what, that's, a good, that's a good question right there in itself because it's not just here. Crime seems to be a thing that's obviously worldwide, yeah. but it's just more noticeable now because it wasn't to this level before. Like I always talk about crime on my channel like in some aspect at least to prepare for petty crime and stuff like that. But over these past few years where that's why they, they're blaming Lasso for it, it's just gotten worse. So is there anything that can be done about it? It depends on who you ask. For some people, it's honestly like it's just baked into the system. You got to get rid of the drugs. You got to get rid of the, the gangs. Mm -hmm. And that just doesn't seem to work because you try to get rid of the gangs, the gang leaders, the drugs and stuff like that. But then you have the, the I guess, uh, the, the system, which is corrupt. And I know a lot of people always tell me the same thing that there's corruption in the United States as well, there's corruption in other countries, but is it so blatantly obvious and open where people talk about it and it's like, people know about it, so, so like, like who is being corrupt and everything? Like, why do criminals get out of jail after killing someone in less than a year, in less than a few months? Because they bribe the, they bribe the, the judges. Do you see that so openly out in the states where you know that the judge was bribed? I don't think so. Maybe it could happen behind closed doors and no one ever finds out about it. But over here, it's like you know that the judge had to be bribed because how does someone who had a criminal sentence for killing someone get out of jail in less than a year? Yeah, It's not right. So what can be done about it? Like I said, there's the extreme. People want the government to be like with Bukele. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's El Salvador's president who went to the extreme level of every criminal in jail, they have no rights, 
and everything is just like, now it's a, a utopia in comparison to what it was before. It was literally terrible, now it looks good. But Could that happen here? Could that happen? You'd have to get rid of a lot of things, and you'd have to have someone with serious, excuse me, balls to, to yeah. want to like get into that kind of position and like, yeah. like want to do something like that because you know the risk as a person going into power. I've, I've mentioned this before because people are like, ace for president. I'm like, yeah, you, I don't, I don't, want, to want, to be, I don't want to be president because, <laughs> but then the thing is I'd have to go into the same situation as everyone else. Mm -hmm. I'd have to end up being a corrupt person because if I'm not, I'd have to be a corrupt person because if I'm not, then I would probably end up being killed too and replaced by someone who is willing to be corrupt. But you know, a country like Thailand is supposed to be one of the lowest crime rates in the world. You don't commit a crime in Thailand I mean, because punishment is very severe. So I always say, why can't we do that here? But I understand. It's a political thing. It's political power, political corruption, fear of reprehension and, you know, or retribution, yeah, you know, and it's like, I, I, I don't see it happening any time. There so. should be a system with crime and actual repercussion, but the repercussion here makes you feel like you can commit crimes, and even if there were repercussion, jail time, if you have someone who can bail you out, someone with money who can talk to one of the judges because they're, they're the friend of your friend. Yeah, just buy them out. They buy them out. So, Let's talk about your channel. <laughs> How's it doing? I mean, how many subscribers do you have now? Uh, currently, 3,300. I think it's 3,330. You're, you're growing exponentially here. Little by little. I mean, I say it's little by little because I feel like exponential growth is the whole, you know, getting, uh, oh, one day you wake up and you're like a 1,000 subscriber plus and something like that. Yeah, so but, let, me, let me, since you're another YouTube subscriber, let me get your opinion about something. All right. I heard yesterday that there's another... YouTube creator, a couple, there's lots of them, you know, so we're not going to single out any one couple, because I know a lot of people in my channel are going to say, oh, I know who you're talking about, but no, <laughs> you don't. But there, this couple, I was told the other day by one of, a new neighbor that just moved into my building that he paid this YouTube couple 240 bucks for information on how to do things like get your visa, how to move here, how to get, how to buy groceries, how to, how to get to a doctor, how to get health care, how to buy insurance, 240 bucks. Do, do you charge for your information? I don't charge for, if you ask me a question, I'm never going to charge for that. Mm -hmm. Unless it's something that I have to physically go out and do like, boots on the ground services, yeah. like, hey, that's you like want me to... Yeah. No, of course, yeah. that's a totally different story. But if you just ask me a question, I'm always going to answer. Yeah. I don't think questions should be paywalled. Like, like why? It, it, it's it's it, not yeah. the ideal in my opinion. I heard mind. this one YouTuber is charging like $185 for a checklist. A checklist. A checklist on things to do before you move to Ecuador. And I have a checklist that I did that has 30, 40 items on it that I can't see myself charging anybody for it. So how many videos do you have posted now? About 140, I think, 130, 140. See, you're, you're like, okay, so I've been doing that my for almost two years. I have 285 videos and I have 6,100 and something subscribers. Thank you very much, <laughs> you know? But, and you've been doing this for less than Two years, right? Well, dedicated to Ecuador content, yes, yeah. less than two years. Yeah, and here you are, uh, how many videos? 140. 140. Yeah. Of course, you count in shorts and stuff like that to that. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you're doing really well. And I, I encourage everybody to subscribe. I always tell people to go and subscribe to your channel because you do have good content. So, okay, so I think we'll wrap this up. I don't see anything else we can talk about. It was a real bitch getting here today. <laughs> <laughs> Driving in general and the stress that it causes over here in Ecuador, people won't believe it, but... It's a challenge. It's a challenge. You if gotta you come. want a real challenge, move to Ecuador and buy a car. This is what my, my dad always said about uh, driving. Like, if you can drive in Ecuador, you can drive anywhere. That's Yeah, th that's good, because I, I think... I can't wait to go back and visit back home, because I was planning on going home for a month in October. 
And I'm obviously going to have to rent a car while I'm there, or actually have a friend that will loan me theirs. But I'm, I'm just trying to imagine what it's going to be like driving in the United States after it's, driving here. It's going to be like the cartoon scenes <laughs> where you're, like, you're driving and like the birds come out, the rainbows, yeah. everything's like chirping. <laughs> yeah. The background music, like spring. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's going to be great because in comparison, man. Yeah. All right, well, listen, I appreciate your time, and, and thanks for doing this with me. And, and as always, I always appreciate the, the, the good work that you do because you're – I don't always agree with all YouTubers that do what we do, but I agree with everything you do. So keep up the good work, okay? Working and thanks for, for helping me with this one. Not a problem. Glad cool. to be here, Don. All right, cool. I mentioned in this video that there was a little – some information that I wanted to share – at the end of the video, okay? And that's what I'm gonna share with you now. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about sex in this video was there's a story that I wanted to relate to you, but I was really, really, really on the fence about whether I should post it or not. The first time I recorded a video about it, I mentioned the guy's name and I thought about it afterwards, even though I got this story out of a local online newspaper, the Coinca High Life, I decided to redo it and, and, and not broadcast it and give out his name, not so much out of respect, but just to maybe keep myself from getting in trouble. Because quite frankly, I don't have any respect for this guy. And you'll see why. He's an American expat who was evicted from his apartment in, in Cuenca. The reason why he's being evicted is because of his behavior. He had unruly parties, loud noise parties. He had a lot of uh, in and out traffic to his place. The guy was 61 years old. And when these people showed up, the authorities showed up to evict him, he uh, put up a fight and he punched this guy, punched him two times. So they ended up having to call the police and have them get involved and they were finally able to get him out of his apartment. One of the reasons that he was being evicted was because he had a lot of traffic of sex workers, prostitutes coming in and coming and going all the time, enough that people were complaining about it. The guy, ironically, was able to talk the police into letting him go back into his apartment. And the reason why, and I'm looking for a, a piece of paper that I had some notes. The reason why he wanted to go back into his apartment is because he uh, had some heart medication that he couldn't be without. And it turns out that when the cops took him back to get his heart medication, the heart medication was a medication called caviar. If I have that wrong, I'll correct it. But caviar, and what that is, that's a medication for erectile dysfunction. So here, here's a guy, here's an American expat that's making the news because he's being evicted from his apartment and he has sex traffickers coming and going. And, you know, folks, this is not good. American expats that come here and do this kind of stuff would make it tough for all of us. Okay? Shame on you. I'm speaking to the guy that was evicted. You're an asshole. You come to this country and you make it tough for me. And you're tough for the next people that want to come here and live a decent life. And you come here and you pick a fight with the authorities that want to e evict you. You're wrong, pal. You don't deserve to live here. And I hope they throw your ass out of this country. They probably will, since you assaulted the authorities. I hope they do. Folks, people like that are coming here from all over the world. And even these guys, these sex perverts, these guys that are addicted to sex, and that's all they want. They come here for sex tourism. And, and I mentioned that when I was talking to Ace. And this guy just couldn't control it. So he got kicked out of his apartment, and he'll probably get kicked out of the country. Good for him. I hope he does. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching this channel. Thanks for watching this video. 
I hope you get something out of it. Don't let stories like this discourage you too much. But I'll tell you, folks, if you go back and watch Ace's channel and watch the podcast that he did with me, he did a podcast on reasons for not coming to Ecuador. And he asked me a lot of questions, and I gave him brutal truth answers based on my opinion only. Okay? <clears throat> so I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Please go watch it. Okay? If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me. Okay? And I say that with peace and love. Okay? I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. What do you guys do for fun around here? I don't know, sometimes we throw shit at Kevin. Who's Kevin? Kevin!